there can't be any freebies, there can't be any plays off. Because um, you know, teams like with that much talent, they'll, they'll make you pay. You know, they can. Um, you know, the head coach said it today, but I think it's a really good point. You know, if you play when you play a defense like this, you know, you can go four or five plays, you know, really good for us. But then if you let one go, uh, they'll make a big play, and, and the drive is, is totally different, or, or the game is totally different. You know, after that, so. Really, it's going to be we need great focus, great execution every single play. How important is it to make the uh, it's, it's very important. That's uh, really the only way to advance the ball. And, um, you know, if you want to score the ball, you got to first advance it, you know, possess it. And, you know, so, um, you know, getting first downs is, is critical, especially early, uh, getting us into the rhythm. But you know, as, a, as a competitor, how much fun are these games? Top five showdowns. I mean, these are the kind of games you dream of playing in as a kid, right? You know, growing up playing in these huge games at home in front of seventy thousand against a top five team. Yeah, you know, every game is is important. Um, it's it's definitely a lot of fun having a, you know a home game against a ranked opponent, just because um, you know people are probably going to count us out, and that's fine. We've been there before. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us take pride in that. You know, it seems like Iowa's always always slept on, always always the underdog. So it's good. You know, Maryland scored 27 against them, so when you watch the films, okay, that works, maybe we can try that. Is that a great trip for you at all? Yeah, yeah, you know, anytime a team has had success, you know, you try and see why they had success, you know, schematically, and, um, you know, was it a personnel thing, was it a was it a play call, you know, what concepts were they running? Um, you know, we, we, with any game, you, know, you, you see what worked or, or what would have worked against, you know, what, what the defense was doing, and... Uh, you know, you try and take that forward and, and do however we want to do it. You know, if we want to attack similarly or, or uh, with a similar look to get the, you know, the look we want, whatever it may be, yeah. In a typical week, not necessarily this week, but how many hours of film study of the opponent do you think you'd put in an average week? Kind of is, yeah, it is quite a bit. Um, I don't know, probably three, four hours a day. Um, you know, Thursdays and Fridays, a little bit less just because you're, you got to get a feel for it. You don't want to overdo it. Um, but yeah, you know, probably three, four hours a day. Wow. You were you guys, a little banged up last year in this game. Does that sort of like sit in the back of your mind at all when you go into this one or do you just put that behind you? Uh, no, I mean, it doesn't. I, I was banged up because I was just an idiot and didn't slide. Um, and it got roughed up pretty good. Just um, No, I mean, it's just... Uh, just got to know to be smart when I'm, when I'm running the football because, uh, you know, an extra couple yards, depending on the situation, you know, isn't, isn't worth the, uh, the blows to the body. So, yeah. You talked about a few minutes ago about the underdog role. Why, why do you guys succeed in that role or, or why do you guys embrace that role? Uh, you know, I think um, most of the guys in this program, you know, on this team, for the most part, were, were recruited by Michigan, were recruited by Ohio State, were recruited by Penn State. Um, you know, obviously there's some that, that probably were, but uh, and, you know we feel that you know we can play with any team, and I think our program has showed that over the years that um, you know as under recruited as we may be, you know we still you know consistently are pretty pretty good football team. So um, I think that's something to take pride in. Uh, and, but really, it doesn't mean anything if we don't go out there and, and play well on Saturday. So that's that's the main focus. Do you, do you use last year's championship game as motivation at all, or do you try not to think about what happened in December? Yeah, I, I think you know, yes and no. It's just um, you know, obviously, no one wants to feel. No one likes. I'd be shocked if you know. I don't know. The last time I lost by 39 points, uh, I'd say the same for most of the guys on the team. Uh, it's never fun. Uh, so in that way, yeah, it's definitely motivation. But um, you know, it's, it's it's just important to realize that you know, 2021 was 2021, and this is a new year. Um, that you know, they don't get to carry any of those points over. Uh, it's a new team. You know, they have a new team. We have a new team. So um, the opportunity is all in front of us there. They have a new DC. Is their defense any different? Uh, you know, there's some of their now stuff slightly different, but for the most part, uh, you know, they're. They kind of found what they want to do, I think, and um, you know I'm sure there'll be some wrinkles Saturday, but you know for the most part we know how they how they want to defend, you know different stuff. Um, yeah, the system for the most part is the same. How have you seen the offensive line? It's a young group. How have you seen them kind of grow day to day? Um, 
I've actually seen him grow a lot day to day um, from the first game to where we are now. Just um, looking back at the games, watching the game film, and uh, seeing what went wrong and uh, how we can adjust to you know movement with the D line and stuff like that, and just seeing them work together each week to get better. And I think it's definitely shown over the course of four games now that they are improving. And, um, Everybody's got great potential in our offense, and I think that it's really exciting to see that them, them working towards that potential and see how good we can be. Harbaugh said something like how Iowa City's are top five teams come to die. What makes Kinnick such a tough place for opposing teams to play? I mean, first off, you have to go to that end zone. It's just loud. You can't hear anything. Um, remember last year against Penn State, like they, they had like four false starts in a row just because – Nobody can hear anything, so that's yeah, one I mean, thing about it. And I don't know. It's just the way Kinnick is designed. The, the fans are, like, right on top of you. It's just so loud, and um, there's just something special about, you know, swarming out in Kinnick. I just can't really explain it, but it's just, you know, defending our home turf, and uh, we take a lot of pride in that, and really excited to do that again this weekend. It messes with the opponent, but how much do you guys feed off of that oh, energy? Geez, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can't, yeah, if you can't get excited for a game in Kinnick, then I don't know what's wrong with you. You're not human because <laughs> if if you're not ready to go, the the fans yeah, will get ready to go. As a competitor, are these the games that you just kind of you live for? Top five coming to your place. I mean, this is this is what drives you in these types of games. For sure, for sure. I mean, I think that's a big reason why all of us come and play Big Ten football. You know what I mean? I mean. We want to be in these positions. We want to have these opportunities to, yeah, I'd say just you know, show what we can do against the best of the best. <laughs> it's really exciting. Good kick. I mean, at the beginning of that half, uh, I felt wind going that way a little bit. But what was your reaction when you saw it? Did you know it went in right away? <laughs> like when I kick it, like if, if you can, you get yeah. the feeling like if, then it's gonna go in. Uh, but I, I mean, I thought it was gonna go in. And I saw it. I'm like, oh wait a minute. Wait a minute. But yeah. That's a pretty good feeling, right? Really good feeling. <laughs> Career long. It's always good. So you, you, has it given you confidence that you got off to a fast start? Yeah. Really good confidence. I mean, I was confident before I went out there. And it, I mean, you treat every play the same way you would every time you go kick the ball, whether it's out here, whether it's in the game. How you kick the ball is how you kick the ball. Where's this confidence come from? Uh, well, I mean, I like to. I would say it's more of like the habits you create because like I try to like treat every way like I try to treat everything the way I would treat like I don't know where it is. You would, I treat everything the same so like I never go out there and kick it and like say I miss uh, there's no way I can look back and be like oh I wish I would have done that I wish I would have done that better because I try to do it my best every time everything I do. Have you talked to Nate Kading? Has he worked with you at all? Or? Uh, yes, I have talked to Nate a few times. He's come to a few of our practices, giving me tips and things like that. And I'm pretty sure he was at one of the games, whether it was Iowa State or Nevada, in the stands, and he was giving Coach Lavara uh, observations he saw, things like that. Have you had much communication with Keith Duncan, considering that you have the same coach? Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I'm in, like, text group chat with him or whatever and yeah I mean it's the same it's the same form we have, we have the same form coach so I mean he's probably one of the biggest helpers I have because just because we have so much to relate about and our form is pretty much the same so if there, I have little kinks here and there he's the guy you can go to to fix it.